What's happening, folks? I am Dave Swift from ClientAnt.com, and it's time for another edition of That LTD Life, the show where I review the best and sometimes the worst lifetime deals on the internet. Today, I'm looking at a tool called URL Monitor. This is an SEO-based tool. It's designed to help you get ranked on Google by easily connecting your website up to the Google Search Console. If you're not familiar with Google Search Console, I'll break that down for you in this video. But first, let's just dig into what URL Monitor is, where you can get it, and how much it costs. So this is the AppSumo deal page. And as you can see here, it starts at $59 for lifetime access. If we go to plans and details, you can see that for tier one, 59 bucks, you're gonna get five websites. If you would like to offer this to clients, you're probably looking at tier three or above because that's going to give you white label dashboard and reports, meaning that you'll be able to put your own logo on this and easily generate reports that you can send to your clients to let them know which pages are showing up on Google. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab tier one here for demo purposes. We'll get into it and find out if this thing is actually worth your time and money. Let's go. All right, so I got my account and I'm setting it up right now. And the first thing I see is to connect my account up to Google. Now URL monitor obviously integrates with Google Search Console. So if you don't have a Google account or for some reason you're apprehensive about giving Google access to your website's URLs, well, I'll explain why that's not such a great idea, but go ahead and get set up with your Google account. Just click this button, you'll see the normal login screen for Google. Now I'm gonna be signing up with a fresh Google account because then I can show you the entire setup process in case you have never used Google Search Console before. So here I go, I'm signing in with my fresh Google account. I'm giving it all the permissions it wants, and now I'm inside of URL Monitor. Now, I don't know if this is just me or maybe because I'm using the Safari browser, the last few times I've signed into Google, it's only given partial access, so I've gotta go and reconnect. This has happened so many times recently that I can't believe it's the application's fault. But anytime I do this, I just have to run it through a second time and then everything works fine. Let me know in the comments, have you run into that too or is it just a me thing? All right, after two attempts, I am good. I am set up with Google. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is connect my site because as you can see, I currently have no sites. I'm on tier one, which means I can have up to five sites linked. So the application itself is pretty bare bones. There's not a lot to see before you get things linked up. If we take a look at the menu bar, we can see our sites here. This is the page we're currently on and it's essentially blank. And then next uh, tab over, we've got our account settings, which are basically just allowing us to delete our account. We can't even edit our email address. The next tab over is to email support that literally just pops open a blank email. Then we have the option to become an affiliate, view their roadmap, and check out their YouTube channel. So what you actually need to do to get set up with this is log into your Google Search Console and add your URL to Search Console. Let's go ahead and do that. The URL for Search Console used to be really easy to find. It used to be search.google.com, but they changed that some years ago. So I think the fastest way to find it, if you've never been there, is just type in Search Console into Google, and it should be the top result. It's gonna take you to a landing page that looks like they want you to buy something, but Search Console is totally free. So go ahead and just click the Start Now button. You do not need to be a Google Workspace user. You can use your plain old Gmail account or any Google account that you have set up. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get set up in Google Search Console is go to this dropdown and choose Add Property. From here, you have the option to connect up your website one of two ways. The new way is domain-based verification, and that's what I recommend doing. So I'm gonna do that here in this video. For this video, I'm gonna be connecting up nimblesound.com. This is actually a site that's used in one of my courses. We built it just for the course, so there's not a lot of real content there, but it's perfect for this use case. So I'm gonna go ahead and verify nimblesound.com, and then they give me some directions here to verify my ownership of the domain via DNS. It's done with a very simple text record, so I'm just gonna copy the text record right here, and then it says to sign into your domain name provider, e.g. GoDaddy or Namecheap. I happen to be using Cloudflare, so I'm gonna head over there. Inside of Cloudflare or whatever provider you're using, you're gonna look for where your DNS records are. Once you enter the DNS area where you can edit the records, we're just gonna add a new record and it's gonna be a text record. In the name field, you'll just leave that blank or use the at symbol if it's required like it is on Cloudflare and then paste in the record that Google provided you. Then you go ahead and hit save and that's it, you're all done. You can head back over to the Google Search Console and click on verify. Now it's gonna go ahead and just check to make sure that you've done that correctly and in this case I have, so it says ownership verified and I can go to the property. Okay, so now my domain is connected up to Google Search Console. So let's head back over to URL Monitor and find out where the magic happens. So back in the Sites tab here, I'm gonna click on Refresh and it should 
check for the new site and sure enough, here it is. And it says enabled zero of five. Now that's because remember with my AppSumo tier one plan, I get up to five different domains. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now, the next thing we need to do is grant access to URL monitor to go ahead and send the URLs to Google Search Console. So to do that, I'm gonna click right here and it's gonna tell me exactly what I need to do in order to grant the access. This essentially means that we're adding additional users to Google Search Console, which might sound kind of scary. Remember, these are just automated services to send the URLs directly into Google for us. It says each account can submit 200 URLs per day to Google Search Console. To activate them, you need to add the email address as owner to your Google Search Console property for nimblesound.com. Now, if you remember looking at the AppSumo deal page, I didn't go over this in great detail, but tier one can submit up to 500 pages per day. That's why I got three email addresses, which actually it seems like that would be 600 pages per day. So I wonder if that's a typo. Then tier two will give me 1200 pages per day. And if I go up to tier three, I will get 2000 pages per day. There is the option to go up even higher to tier four and get 5000 pages per day and a maximum of 100 websites. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up these users inside of Google Search Console. But stay tuned because after that, I'm gonna explain to you why you should be using Google Search Console, even if you despise everything else that Google does. So let's proceed. We're gonna go ahead and just set up these users. I'm gonna use my Paystack here and I will grab all of the email addresses. And then I can click right here to go to the correct screen inside of Google Search Console. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add some users. So I'll choose add user, paste in the email address, and then very important, you need to set the permissions to be owner. That's the scary part because an owner could potentially remove you, but these are just automated services. So don't worry, you can tell that because it's a G service account. They're actually using Google Cloud to do all this. So I guess, I guess worst case scenario, their stuff could be hacked and you could lose access to your Google Search Console, but chances of that are pretty much slim to none. All right, I've got two of them added. I'm just adding the third one right now. All right, now I've got all of my users added to Google Search Console. So now I'm back on URL monitor and I'm just gonna click this check status button. And it says active and I'm free to close here. The next thing you might wanna consider doing is turning on auto indexing as I just did. I highly recommend doing this. What it's gonna do is every single day, it will go ahead and send all of your existing URLs over to Google Search Console so that you don't need to worry about doing anything manually. Let's go ahead and click on the details button right here. Now on this page, I can see all of the progress that has taken place. First of all, we've got a little drop down here. So if you had multiple sites, we'd be able to choose between the active site that we're looking at right here. Uh, I assume this is going to be the white label dashboard as well. So potentially your logo could go up here if you get tier three and above, and you'd be able to just give access to your clients for their particular site, I assume, but obviously I haven't tested that. Uh, we've got some options over here. Index emails are enabled. This means that I'm gonna get an email every Monday when new pages are indexed for the site, I can easily turn that off if I don't wanna receive emails. I can also get emails when pages are de-indexed by Google. This should happen immediately. I can turn that on or off as well. Notice there's an export button up here. I'm gonna assume that is where we get our reports. The reports can also be white labeled. I'll go ahead and download this even though I don't have any data in here yet. Turns out, no, that wasn't a PDF report. It was actually just a CSV file, which you could obviously use in any application. It's gonna have all of the information that's available on the website. Currently, it's just blank because there's nothing on my account yet. So here we can see auto index is enabled. This is the same setting we saw over on the sites section over here, but within the actual site itself in the site details, there's a little bit more granularity involved. We can have it turned off for not indexed pages or for all pages. So it's going to auto index pages again, checking pages that are already indexed on the Google Search Console. So if we wanna leave this at the default setting, I think that's probably uh, a fine thing to do. Next, you can manually add pages right here if you don't want to wait for it to auto index. And then over here, we just get confirmation again that all of our accounts have been added. Those are the accounts that are adding the URLs over to Google Search Console. All right, as you can see below this is some data about the site, how many pages are indexed, how many are in progress, how many are not indexed, and how many are not checked. And then we've got some filtering options down below that. All right, because I've got a brand new Google Search Console account and I've just connected my domain up, there's one step I need to take in order for my URLs to be visible inside of URL Monitor. So inside of Google Search Console, I actually wanna go down to sitemaps right here and then I need to enter in the URL of the sitemap of my website. Now, typically this is gonna be your URL followed by sitemap.xml and you can test this out. 
If you're using a content management system like WordPress, or in this case, I'm using Ghost, it's gonna generate an XML sitemap for you, especially if you're using WordPress with an SEO plugin. That's one of the main reasons to use an SEO plugin. You just simply enable it and the XML sitemap is gonna be generated typically at this URL, although you might be able to configure that, so definitely check your settings. What we're gonna do is just copy this URL right here and then head back over to Search Console and paste it in. When we submit our sitemap, that's gonna tell Search Console to go ahead and look at those URLs. You should see a message, something like sitemap index process successfully. Now back over in URL monitor, you're gonna see that there's one sitemap connected to this domain. Now back in Google Search Console, you'll wanna head over to the sitemap section and it should look something like this. You should get a success message from that sitemap you submitted. If you click into it, you're gonna see that there's more sitemaps nested inside of your sitemap. So there's one for authors, pages, posts, and tags. The authors one is not working on this site. I don't think I have it enabled. Then the other three uh, have all found some dedicated URLs. So there's 11 pages, there's gonna be eight posts and 13 tags. So those are all gonna be indexed. But the reason we use a tool like URL Monitor is that these are indexed only once. If there's changes that happen to the pages, well, that's what URL Monitor is for. It's going to send them back over to Google Search Console to get indexed. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about why you should even be using Google Search Console in the first place. In my opinion, Google Search Console is the best product that Google makes. That might be controversial, but let me explain. With something like Google Analytics, you put a piece of code on your website that just gives data to Google and you're not charging them for it. You're literally letting them know everything about the users who visit your website. What pages do they like to go to? What links do they click on? Where do they leave your site? And then Google, because they're tracking so much of the web, knows what that person does next. And that's a lot of data that we're just giving away for free. However, with Google Search Console, the roles are reversed a little bit. Here, we're telling Google, hey, show our pages to people who are using Google that are searching. They're not actually putting anything on your website. If you notice, at no point did I have to go into my website and inject any code in order to use Search Console. Instead, it's just letting Google know what content is out there so that when people search the web, if people still search the web after AI fully takes over, well, then we'll have a better chance of ranking because Google will fully understand our content. So I would say that both with Google Analytics and Google Search Console, it is a two-way exchange because Google shares some of the analytical data with us and we can learn about our site visitors by using Google Analytics. However, it favors Google, right? It's providing them all of the data they need to make a very powerful ad platform and a very profitable search engine. But with Google Search Console, it's obviously benefiting Google because now they know more about the web and what pages are out there, but it's also mostly benefiting us. I would say it's kind of weighted the other direction with Search Console because now we have a better chance of reaching more readers, more viewers, whatever the objective is for your site. So if it's not clear yet, the idea with URL Monitor is that when I make changes to my website, when I add new pages, it's gonna push those URLs right into Search Console and automatically refresh things without having me go into Search Console manually and then have to do all of that work. Okay, so we're about done with URL Monitor here. Uh, by the next day, the site index should have populated. You'll wanna log back in in about 24 hours, make sure all of the pages that are showing up on Google are also showing up in URL Monitor, and you should basically be good to go at that point. I do wanna point out there is an extra feature over here. You might be curious, well, if I only get five sites, can I reuse them? Let's say I lose a client. You sure can. Click on the triple dots over here and you can archive a site. That will free up this slot and then we can go ahead and use five additional sites. If you ever change your mind, just click on show archived up here and you can re-enable it. Okay, contrary to what it says right here, you can't enable archive sites. You just have to unarchive it first. After it's unarchived, you'll wanna re-enable it and turn on auto indexing. So I'm already getting some stats here inside of URL Monitor. It looks like it's indexing some pages right now. It says it's got 12 that are indexed, one is in progress, 18 are not indexed, and three are not checked. So I think for 59 bucks, URL Monitor is a pretty reasonable investment. It serves a good purpose at not too high of a cost but I would definitely check into other SEO tools you might already be using and see if they offer any auto indexing services before investing in additional tools. Now, if you have any questions about SEO or the web in general, you can head over to clientamp.com and hit me up over there. My team is happy to work alongside you to build an online business. 
Also, you can make sure to leave me a comment down below. I'm always checking that and answering any questions about this deal or anything else you might see on AppSumo. If you like this content, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.